you just ran into a hidden gem. We're gonna go over three quadratic equations that might show up on the ACT, SAT. Promise it'll be worth your time. Just pause the video and try the questions out so you get some practice and then unpause it for the answers. Let's get to work. We got some work to do, guys. Let's start off with question one. Out of 10 SAT guys, I've probably seen this nine or 10 times. This is like their favorite question to ask. We're trying to find the value of K and if you look at K, it's in the middle of the right side of the equation. And that is the BX term of standard form. Kind of gives you a hint that you need to take the left side of the equation and distribute it. Let's do that. If I distribute the first part, I get AX times 2X, which is 2AX squared. Then I go to AX times negative 5, which is negative 5AX. Then I go down to B. B times 2X is positive 2BX. And I'm putting it right here because we're going to end up combining what those are once we find A and B. So we're going to end up combining those like terms. But for now, they're not like terms. You'll see. And B times negative 5 is negative 5B. All that on the left will end up matching with this part of the equation right here. And that's how we're going to get A, B. And once we got A and B, then we can find K. So I'm going to highlight so you guys really visualize what's going on in this question. These two, once I find A and B, will be the value of K. And we got to find A and B first. And it's not even that bad. Some of you can do it in your head. Actually, you should be able to do this in your head. But if you can't, here's how you find A and B. This is 2 times A and this is 12. What is 2 times a number to get me 12? That's 6. But if you can't do that, because sometimes there are fractions in there and they, they try to confuse you, you can just set up a simple equation that looks like this. 2a equals 12 divided by 2a equals 6. And even if you test it, if I put 6 right here, 2 times 6, that's 12, which will match this part right here. To find b, negative 5b should equal negative 10. And some of you guys know the answer is 2, but if you can't do that in your head, then set it up. Negative 5b equals negative 10 divided by negative 5, and you get b equals 2. So now that we have those two, let's plug them in into this part. I'm going to do it on the side. Negative 5 times a is 6. That equals negative 30. And 2b, 2 times 2 is 4. And I have to combine this because that makes up my K. So that is just negative 30 plus 4, which equals negative 26. That one was kind of rough, but I'm sure they were going to ask that. So take some notes down. Practice this one. Let's move on to the next question. Question two. We're trying to find the value of x squared. And the first time I did this, I almost fell for it, guys. I almost eliminated these, but you cannot do that. You can't do that because they're not like terms. This one's got y squared. This one's got y. So be careful. But... We do have to eliminate. We do have to eliminate. To find x squared, my strategy is to eliminate x squared first. And that is by multiplying this by negative 1. The shortcut is just to change all the signs in the inside. And from there, all I got to do is add from top to bottom. So I'm going to get this. These are going to cancel. I cannot add these two. That's going to end up being y squared plus y equals 14 minus 2, which equals 12. And now we're going to equal that to 0 so we can factor it out. y squared plus y, subtract 12 on both sides, minus 12 equals 0. And that one's not that bad to factor. Think of two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add up to 1. And if you factor that really quick, y plus 4 and y minus 3 equals 0. So my two answers for y are just the opposites of those numbers. y equals negative 4 and the opposite of that one is y equals 3. So now I have the values of y and I can easily find x squared. Doesn't really matter which one you pick. Let's just pick this equation right here to plug it in. x squared minus 
Let's use one of my Y's. Pick your lucky one, and some of you guys can do it in your head. Negative four is one of my Y values equals two. X squared plus four equals two. And I knew it, I picked the wrong one. So we gotta test the Y equals three in the same equation. You see, I mean, I did that on purpose so I can explain it better. So that is not one of my answers. Last resort, Y equals three, plug it in the same way. I just wanted to explain it better to you guys. X squared minus three equals two. Add three to both sides and you get X squared equals five, which is answer D. Breathe guys, we got one more. Promise it's worth it. Anytime you got two equations and they cross, you're trying to find where these two equations or functions are equal to each other. In this question, we're trying to find the value B. So I got these two functions right here. I got this one and I got this one. I need to set them equal to each other because that is going to find my intersection point. So we got f of x equals g of x. And now we just substitute. The function of f is written with the expression 2x squared plus 2. And the function of g is written with negative 2x squared plus 18. Let's solve for x. Let's solve for x. Add 2x squared to both sides. I got 4x squared plus 2 equals 18. And do the rest of it. You got 4x squared equals 16 divided by 4, and you get x squared equals 4. To undo a square, you could just square root. So my two answers are x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. I mean, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. So guess what you do with those to find your y value or to find your letter B? All you got to do and the only thing to do is to plug it into one of the functions. It doesn't matter which one. You can pick any one of those. Let's just go with the positive one. And we're in that same scenario. You gotta just plug one of those in and hopefully we pick the right one to come up with the answer. Let's plug in the first x value. f2 equals two, and we're just substituting two for x. Two squared plus two. Two squared is four times two plus two. 8 plus 2 equals 10. Answer choice C. If you plug in the other one, I think you'll get the same answer. You'll get the same answer because that's going to be 2 times negative 2 squared plus 2. And negative 2 squared ends up being 4 anyways. So you're still going to get 10. Hopefully you got some practice out of this one. And if you enjoyed it, throw a like, a subscribe. I'll try to run through as many SAT problems as I can. But until then... I will see you on the next episode. Peace.